So Federico Chiesa to Liverpool, here we go. I spoke to the echoes of Paul Ghost about whether this was an opportunistic signing or a panic buy on this week's Journal Insight. Here's the clip. Check out the full show on redmenplus.com. Okay, look, let's move on to the big one. Federico Chiesa. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm actually not being rude um, by looking at my phone constantly, but we're sort of on the, on the precipice of maybe someone giving me a little message. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, fingers crossed we can have some breaking news on that one. But, I mean, look, from out of nowhere, really, and is this, first and foremost, is this a sign? Because it feels like we've been a bit like this again this summer of... Liverpool have battened down the hatches a lot more in terms of transfer stuff. It does feel like a lot less is getting out. Now, I think that's also being read as Liverpool are doing a lot less. So if Liverpool mm-hmm. were having a super active market where they were five, signing five footballers, maybe more stuff would get out, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it does feel like for a start, Liverpool have been a lot more cards close to the chest this summer than they have been maybe in previous. Yeah, I mean, you look at, um, you look at the players who we know that they've had Real interest in the summer and, and Lenny Yoro had come out. I think it was David Ornstein, wasn't it, who broke that news in sort of early June. The Anthony Gordon stuff emerges from the, the Newcastle patch. Um, and then who else has there been? There's been. Um, Zuba Mendy. Zuba Mendy, of course, yeah. It does seem like, you know, Michael Edwards back at the top of the tree, very sort of watertight, isn't it, when it's, uh, you know, on his watch. Um, and this one was. It's all developed quickly, hasn't it? I think it was Fabrizio Romano who, who broke the news on Monday evening, obviously close ties with the Italian agency of Federico Chiesa, and it's moved along significantly. I think the early sort of stance was just exploring their options, but the time's of the essence, and I think by Tuesday there was a real breakthrough, and on Wednesday we're hearing that he's en route for his, his medical, and um, everything seems to be going according to plan. So we are expecting that, certainly before the deadline anyway. I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about it later today as a mm-hmm. done deal. Uh, we'll wait and see. But yeah, Liverpool making the move. And I was just sort of saying off camera there, I think had Liverpool been desperate for a, f- for a forward and you know that they were in the market for a forward, I think this would be a little bit of an underwhelming one where you think they've panicked and it's a, a little bit of a desperation one. But given that they're so well stocked in the, those forward options, and Chiesa is going to be coming in to supplement what's already there. He's going to provide backup and competition for places at a relatively modest fee. I think it's a really shrewd one. I think that's that's the big question, really, because inevitably you can't help but look at some of the deals of the past, and particularly around this sort of stage of the transfer window where you know time's ticking down, and you look at. I mean, look, Arthur Mello is the great example, but actually, yeah. your point there almost undercuts that of. Arthur Mello comes in because Liverpool are desperate for yeah. midfielders. Yeah. And Mario Balotelli is the last remaining option. You know, there's there's two or three, I think is like Samuel Eto maybe might have been one that, that summer as well, who was very much on his last legs as a, as a footballer. Went to Everton instead, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So Liverpool were just lo- looking around at what was left. You know, the, the buffet had been cleaned out and it was what can you what can you kind of pull together that will nourish you enough to get you by? Um, so this doesn't quite feel like this one for you if it leans much more towards op- opportunistic yeah, than panic. 100%, 100%, yeah. Uh, obviously, he hasn't been at the levels that he was at in the Euro 2021 when he really... Shots of prominence. Juventus paid 50 million euros for him uh, on a two-year loan. It always seems to be a bit strange the structure of some of the Italian deals, but yeah. So he's a he was a, was a 50 million euro pound footballer at one stage, and I think Slop maybe backs him and his coaching staff to get him back to that level. Um, the thing that interested me is I was looking on transfer mark yesterday. Obviously, the site that you know loads of sort of industry professionals use. Don't mm-hmm. they? It's very influential. And they've still got his market value as 35 million euros. Yeah. So Liverpool are getting Chiesa in for 12 and a half, initial 10. Then that looks to be a shrewd deal. I think Juventus are desperate to get rid of him because he's a high earner. They don't want to pay his wages for a year. They'd rather get a fee for him now, however sort of um, meagre it might be, so they can sort of facilitate a move for Jaden Sancho. So spinning plates and, and moving parts to all of these types of deals. And, and Liverpool, I think, are looking to be opportunistic which has been the, the phrase all summer hasn't it and uh, does that kind of play into because the big question is he's been available all summer so why have Liverpool not moved for him at any point 
earlier than this because that's the thing I think as well. It also makes it look less opportunistic and more panic because, yeah, you know, there's a guy with it with with all when you look at it from the negative perspective, injury issues, unwanted by Juventus. Last few days of the transfer window, he has been getting touted around all summer long. Mm. Why do you think Liverpool have waited to this point to go for him? Yeah, I mean, it's you. You might say that. I mean, it depends on how you look at it, doesn't it? One and you can look at it as a sort of panic, but I, but I think just given the, if it was a number six who Liverpool were looking to bring in now, uh, after failing to get Zuba Mendy and, and they were paying a bit of a knockdown price and a player who's got question marks over his injury history, you'd be a bit more concerned, I mm-hmm. think, because you think, well, look, this this fella might be starting, and you know Arthur Mello, perfect example. Jordan Henderson gets injured in the win over Newcastle in late August <clears throat> and by midnight Julian Ward and Jürgen yeah, Klopp decided that they need someone and Arthur Mello is the, the sum of their efforts but this is different I think the pool taking maybe a little bit more of a measured um, like strategic look at it and very cerebrally decided that if we give this another couple of weeks we can get 5 or 10 million knocked off the price if they'd have gone for him last month he might have been 25 million euros mm-hmm. now he's 15, 13, something like that. So um, it hasn't, you know, the fact that the people haven't had them in earlier hasn't impacted them at all, has it? So mm-hmm. there were, me included, to be fair, I was saying, you know, once you buy players after the season starts, you're always at risk of playing catch up and getting your ideas across while you're sort of on the job. But I think given that Liverpool already have five, all five fit, I think that they can take the time with Keyes to get them up to speed and get across their ideas and then we can look to see what he's got in the tank and obviously an international break coming up yeah, as well so yeah, a couple yeah. of weeks he's only 26 to... as well still yeah yeah absolutely it's, I just think it's a really interesting one just from a from a professional perspective um, obviously Fabrizio Romano is the one who breaks it it's interesting I just thought from the outside the timeline of what follows when that comes out because it's then Paul Joyce goes a couple hours, hour, nearly two hours later, and then yourself and, and and a few of the other Northwest guys come shortly after as well. Is this a case of Romano gets this, runs with it, and then you guys are all then trying to just trying to verify it before yeah. going with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, Fabrizio Romano, obviously the, the biggest football journalist in the world, isn't he? <laughs> you know influence uh, whatever you want to call them 20 odd million followers um yeah i think he's i think he was quite quite well in with the agency um fami i can't remember the, the agent's name now it's uh, i struggle to pronounce it but i think maybe that that seems to be the case that he you know he's on good terms with the agency and then when when he put that out you know obviously checking it with people you speak to and whatever else and checking the there is something in it, and then you um, feel confident enough to report it. And yeah, it was um, it was very true. And, and t- to be fair to uh, to Fabrizio, he um, I think he also broke Watara window last summer, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, he's um, he's been been a busy boy over the summer, like yeah, he well, typically is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're shooting it as enough shots. Yeah, you got a, you got a high a high shots ratio. Yeah, I don't know like quite Nunes. what his quite what his hit rate is at that. But no, I do think it's interesting because you see, I was. We were lining up our sort of ducks when this broke and it had all the hallmarks of, let's call it what it is, it looked like bullshit because it came from nowhere and it, and it, and it was such a wild outside sort of shout that everyone was kind of waiting for the inevitable, give it half yeah, an hour yeah. and, and, and James Pearce will swoop in and, uh, and, and shut this one down or whatever. But were you surprised to see that this one had legs at the time? Yeah, and no, I, I think I've I've spoken a few times that you could always sort of second guess what a Liverpool deal was on the Jurgen Klopp. You mm-hmm. know, certain age range, certain area of the world, maybe you know, Germany, Austria, Bundesliga type stars. Um, but it's a totally new regime, and you can't second guess them anymore. So, yes and no. Um, I, I did have reservations initially because in my in my mind, he's you know we wasn't anywhere near or isn't anywhere near the player he was three years ago and I know he had that bad injury and I just thought he's, he's really struggled with injuries it was like a general perception but obviously you look into it a bit more you find that those injury concerns are maybe a little bit exaggerated at times he still played 37 times last season in all competitions scored nine goals um, in Serie A so um, certainly a player with still plenty to give and at the age of 26 for that price no, it's basically what Liverpool have just sold Bobby Clark for. It's yeah. it's almost 
pretty much what they got for Solanke going to Tottenham from Bournemouth. So <laughs> it just seems really, really shrewd because they don't need them to be 2021. And uh, Federico Chiesa, yeah, they can take the time to get him up to speed. And and it, let's be honest, if he was 2021, Federico Chiesa, you're not getting him for 10 million. Exactly, quid. Yeah. yeah. But Liverpool feel that maybe they can get him back to that sort of level and what an option he'd be if, if he can. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see if he features. Maybe we've just had the League Cup draw last night, haven't we? You know, we might feature in that one. We shall see. It's interesting because nine Serie A goals. I mean, Manchester United in a different age range and, and what have you, and different type of player. But United paid like what 70, 80, mm. whatever million for Hoyland, who had a similar goal return, you know, in, in Serie A as well. So, yeah, without any of the international experience and general football experience that goes with, I think, looked at it on the deep dive, it's like 16,000 something minutes in Serie A, which is yeah. amazing. Like, that's a, that is a lot of football. There's a lot of data for Liverpool to draw upon there and make, yeah. uh, you know, really educated decisions and, and, and weigh up the gamble, really, because yeah. it's not a kid yeah. who's had an injury issue. It's, a, it's a, a, a guy who was on the pathway to being a world star. He may not be able to get to that level, but Liverpool will have decided that probably the level that he's at is good enough right today. Yeah. And if you can yeah. get more, then they've found a real bargain. Oh, 100%. And I also think as well, it, it says a lot for what could happen with Jota and Nunes. You know, <clears throat> this idea of them being able to play on the left, I think maybe Slot's just thinking, well, you two are going to be me number nine. You're down yeah. the middle now, lads, and, and that's where you're playing. And Salah gets a rest. Mm-hmm. When it's needed, he obviously won't won't want to. But you know, at the age of thirty-two, I think preserving him for the business end of the season could be an inspired move. 